If you want to get better at watercolour, pour a bit of tea on your paper. Then add a bit of milk. And finally add some honey onto the page. Now this might actually not be true, but hopefully this has helped you visualise tea, milk and honey. In this video, I'm going to show you a technique that's used by some of the world's best watercolour painters and help you use the technique in your own work. With this process, the amount of paint you're using will gradually increase and the amount of water will gradually decrease with each stage. The first stage is tea. This is your most watery stage and it's also sometimes known as the first wash. In this stage, you're mainly focusing on getting the basic colours right and it will naturally be quite light because you're using less actual paint pigment. The next stage is milk. This is the stage you'll probably end up spending ages on and you'll want to increase the amount of paint that you're using compared to the tea stage. This is the stage where things can really go well or go badly for your painting. You want to make sure that things aren't too thick with paint at this stage or you might start to lose some of the transparent qualities that make watercolour look like watercolour. Use milk for your shadow shapes but remember to save some light areas too. You never want to completely paint over your lighter tea areas with your milk because milky tea is gross. And finally you'll get to the honey stage. At this stage you're using as little water as possible so that the paint is almost opaque. You'll notice that I'm using a small brush because the honey stage is usually reserved for very small specific areas of the painting. Very dark shadows, telegraph pole wires and the bottom of car tyres and things like that. Now I can't take any actual credit for this technique because I first heard about it from urban sketcher Mark Taro Holmes who adapted it from one of the world's greatest watercolour painters, Joseph Zbukvich. They're both incredible teachers, so go and check them out if you haven't already. I'll put a link to some of their videos in the description of this video. So next up, I'm going to show you how to actually apply these three steps in a painting. Before I start painting, I always spray my palette with a bit of water. This helps get the paint flowing and helps me control the ratios of paint to water. I like to start the tea stage with my biggest mop brush, which holds more water and also helps remind me not to focus on any details at this stage. So when I'm doing a landscape, my first step is usually the sky when I'm doing the tea stage. So here I'm just painting that in. And I'm trying to link all of the wash together where possible. So I'm always thinking about connecting my shapes, especially on this first wash stage. You really don't want to break up too many of the shapes. The only exception to that is with the whites that you're going to leave. So you always want to leave a few whites behind, which will be the highlights in your painting. So I'm just working my way down the page, trying to fill most of the area. But obviously, as I said, leaving some whites where possible, just to break things up a bit. The main part of this painting that I left some whites is in that little area of rubble in between the two houses. It was very light there, so I, I left the white there to really make it feel like there was a lot of sun shining down on it and lots of highlights. I also used the tea in, it's not actual tea, it's paint, but I use that with these houses here. You'll see that it started to wash down a little bit onto the bit below. It's pretty easy to fix if you do find that your paint is sliding around all over the place, you can just move it around at this stage, especially if the paper is still wet. And you'll see I've left another white section just underneath the house on the left where the sun is shining down on it. So now we're moving on to the milk stage and I use a silver black velvet brush for this. It still holds a lot of water but it can go a lot more detailed and the, the point is very sharp so it really helps if you want to get those finer details in. So as you can see I'm mixing more paint into the mixture at this stage and it's not quite as watery as it was before. It's still not completely opaque but it's definitely able to give me quite dark darks especially when I'm mixing 
blue and brown, which is my favourite way to get shadow colours. So I'm painting around the buildings and that's another thing that you'll find a lot with watercolour is negative painting because as I keep saying you can't really add in white unless you're using gouache. So I'm, I'm using the shadows of the trees to essentially paint the buildings at the same time. And I'm just going all the way around filling in the shadow shapes. One thing I actually regret with this painting is I didn't leave much of the T stage around on that left hand side so there's not too much of a contrast or any light shapes in that tree so that is one thing I would change if I did this again. Now I'm painting the trees in the background and I'm trying to connect them to the lower part of the bushes. Another person who talks a lot about this is Leron here on YouTube. I will link him down below. He's a really good watercolour teacher and I've learned a lot from him about connecting shapes. So go and watch his videos if you haven't already seen him. So I'm going over with the milk consistency of paint on these buildings and that is just adding the shadow side of things and I'm making sure to leave any of the sections of the building that are in direct sunlight and just leaving the T stage to show through underneath. And once you add the shadows over the top, you'll see that the T, the T stage almost looks white because it is very light. And also remember that when watercolour dries, it does get lighter. So you always want to go slightly darker than you first think because it will lighten up quite a lot as you let it dry. Another thing to note is you really need to wait between the stages. So never try and paint a milk section on a damp tea section, if that makes any sense. And finally, it is the honey stage. And this is my tiniest brush, the Raphael Kalinks Kalinsky Sable, that's difficult to say. And you'll see that the paint is a very thick consistency. It looks a lot thicker than all of the other stages. And it's almost turning the watercolor paint into gouache in the sense that it's making it very, very opaque so you can barely see anything behind it, which is why you wanna only leave this stage until right at the very end because you don't want to paint over all the work that you've just done because that would just be a complete waste of time. So you only really want to save this honey opaque paint stage until the very end and use it for only a few different sections. So I've used it for the trees, I'm using it for the windows and I'm going to use it for the door of this building as well. And it really just defines the shadows and just adds a final bit of depth that you can't really get at any other stage. And I'm just going back into these trees behind, just adding a little bit more in. If I was painting more of a cosmopolitan city scene, I would use this honey stage to paint in the electrical lines above the building. And also if there's any cars, then you can use this stage to paint underneath the cars, which is always one of the darkest shadow areas you'll ever find is underneath the car. You can also use this stage to do some dry brush work. I'm sure some people would recommend not to do this with a sable brush because it might ruin it, but I do it anyway. And obviously you do this at this stage because you can't dry brush with water. So you kind of just want to leave this stage until the very end when you're using less water. If you're using paper with a rougher texture, this effect can be magnified a lot more. It doesn't really work too well in the sketchbook because the paper isn't that rough. But if you have some paper with some texture to it, then it will create a really nice effect. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and it didn't just make you hungry. If you like this video, then please hit the subscribe button. I'll be posting new videos every week and you can catch me on TikTok or Instagram in the meantime. See you in the next one.